Hey, yo, LAZ, man, if you need that music promotion, get at me. You heard? I'm not only the president of this music promotion thing, I'm also a client. You heard? If you don't know about the God, make sure you type in St. Laz J to Kiss. Watch my video with Kiss. Watch my video with Jim Jones and watch my video with Conway, Tony Yayo. You know, too many dudes to mention, man. You heard? I gets it in. You heard they call me Z-Man Suicide Polo with the ski, man. If you need music promotion out there, I'm the best dude you could ever be messing with. You know why? Because I'm an artist, and I know what we need. The truth is speaking. It's Gen Pop Laz, certified cash. They don't know, though. Hey yo, shout out to the guard Shabu, shout out to the whole Cypress Projects, the whole East New York. You heard if you from Cypress or you from East New York, make sure you get in them comment sections. Let me know what block, what ave, what street, what projects you out there repping. You heard? If you from Brooklyn, you already know. I need that Brooklyn love on this. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man, you heard? Gen Pop, we the tip of the spear for the street lesson culture. Back then, but he was one of the, you know, kind of upper escalon dudes. And he was getting ready to bag me for the chain. You know what I'm saying? And off bark was sticking in the back. And somehow he must have seen the move, you know, cause that's what made off bark so powerful because of the whole Tomahawk shit and Brownsville and everything. So. You know, he guard for real, and he seen the move getting ready to go down. And all I remember him saying, "Yo, motherfuckers, better not touch no guards." You know, hmm. and um, you said what year you moved to Cyprus? Nineteen sixty-eight. How that project was brand new, or it had been there for a while already? It, it been there since it, the project itself was built since 1954. Was Cypress Wow even in '68? The projects? No. I mean, when we first got there, it was still basically all Caucasian. So, you know, we that's why I say when it when when it comes to people understanding what this whole gang mentality is, is that you know back then most of us. That, that was blacks that moved into those those type of neighborhoods, you know, we had to fight the white boys. Matter of fact, my cousin and them, you know, from Albany Projects, which we gonna get into that when we get into the whole 5% thing. But when I first told them, cause I was born in Bed-Stuy, you know, and uh, I told them that we was moving out to uh, East New York, the Cypress Hills back then. They said, nigga, you moving to Queens, nigga. You gonna be a Queens, nigga. I'm like, Queens? I'm like, that shit is still Brooklyn. What are you talking about? But back then, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's how East New York was looked at, especially, you know, where we at, cause you know, we right on the borderline. You know, once you go past Pink Alvin, few blocks and you right there in the Howard Beach. So that's how that went. See, the, the whole thing with the 18 is it's a movement. So I really want to do it in regards to that because, you know, the only reason I jumped into this kind of what's called Blaze kept, you know, promoting it as far as, you know, that basically he was never the leader of the 18 and the 18 basically consist of all five percentage that we was the law team, which was right and exact to, you know, a certain extent because most of the, the individuals, especially the young ones, was the individuals that I taught. So as far as the 18, you know, is more movement because our side of the project, we always was political and with the gangs and everything else. So I would have to take everything from the beginning to tie it in so that people could really understand what the whole concept of this 18 thing was. But of course, you know, I'm right at the center of that because that's all our side of the project. Cause I'm from Howard Projects. Now I mean, you know, that's know not that of, far. So I know a lot about Howard Projects. Howard Projects was real. So you gotta understand the, um, the Ville, 
in, 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 in the East is very, very tight with our foundation and the 5% thing. So Brownsville as well, when we was growing up, was, you know, full of 5%. As a matter of fact, Howard Houses, we had two brothers from there, King of Law and uh, I want to say King of Law and Chanel. But I know they was both brothers, you know, and they was they they was real strong, you know. That's why I say we got so many areas to cover when it comes to that, the renegade guards, the this to that. But you know, yeah. how many members of the A team was it though? Originally, yeah. Uh, the picture that I got. Um, I don't know if you got it, but it's in a couple of joints. That's the original picture. It was Panama, me, Arif, El Son, and I think the youngest one, Arif was young as hell too. I think the other young brother that's in the picture with us is K Shot. So really it was just like, you know, oh, and of course Damu. Damu is you know, like that, he's the one. He's the, uh, over all of us, you know what I'm saying? That's my super OG, but he the one that went away right right when the shit really, you know, started to pop off as far as the money was concerned. Because if he was still out there, you know what I'm saying? He would have, uh, he would have controlled the things a lot better. You know, sometimes you got people in position, they got all the heart, but they got no brains. And that gets in the way. So, you know, that that right there is a whole another topic. But yeah. Well, it wasn't too many of us. It might have been like maybe five or six six of us that came up with the concept and then, you know, it just evolved from that point on. Did the did the show the A team have that influence on y'all wanting that name though? Yeah. Kind of. You know, I, w- I would say more more with the young ones than, than, you know, us that was a little bit older. But, of course, it, it had a lot to do with it from, you know, how they just was moving, the fucking, you know, the van. and. <laughs> I was know. about to ask you that. Is it true that the A-team had a crazy van? I, I, I think that might be in, 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 in some, like, real-time shit. It might be a little bit cross reference with the Supreme Team, because I know the Supreme Team actually had a bulletproof van like that. But, you know, I, you know, we never really had one. Well, not unless it's, you know, some of them dudes might be trying to come with some shit later on down the line. And that's, that's where it go to, because, you know, you got our group and then, then afterwards and then kind of afterwards where, where certain people cut it off and say, oh, they just stopped at this period of time. But you know, it, it, it always continued over. So the last little wave was like around 2000, I think it might have been 2002 when they came through the projects and just had a mass scoop up, you know, so-called little gangs in every area and the individuals that they still scoop, like our little nieces and shit like that, they still was, calling them the baby 18 so yeah how did you end up in the streets doing crime well put it this way man. I was born in bed I'm a 1962 baby okay so I was born in bed 518 Quincy Street between Sumner and uh what's that I think that's Trooper Gates is one of them. And uh just me and my mom. The first first the first time before I moved from the start, I say I was like I was in between five and six years old. So that was the first time I experienced what death was as far as on the level of murder. And how that happened was uh they done changed the numbers of the bus, but back then that was the number 10 bus. And uh, me and my mom was getting ready to get on the bus and they had they had the, you know, the yellow line tape, but they had uh, one sheet or whatever over here 
and then you know the other sheet over there and what had happened was the person that got killed at the bus stop they didn't just get killed the person whoever it was they was decapitated so that was the first time that you know what I'm saying that I found out about you know death or anything she of course she ain't going to details that this is a murder or something but you know later on in life if you know somebody was decapitated then nine out of ten they was murdered not unless it was you know some freak accident so i say with that i would say that even at that young age back then you know this is probably way before y'all time or anybody thinking about riding on the back of a, a bus but growing up then that was like some ill shit so I was even a little dude back then like getting into little little things um, what street you said that was on though when you was waiting for the bus it was on Quincy and Sumner right there on the corner because right there on that corner it used to be an RKO movie theater. It used to be an RKO movie theater, and then, if I'm not mistaken, they they, they changed it into a PAL boxing joint. Mm. Yeah, right there on the corner of Quincy and Sumner, and we just catch the bus right there on the other side because it was on the same same side of the block that that we lived on. What member of the A team did you meet first? See, that's why I say it's a movement because these is all the same dudes that was my OGs since I first moved in the project. They was some like, of them was I, in I, your I, building? Like that whole area, like the four buildings, the main buildings that we talking about that's classified as the A team side is my building which is 345 Fountain the building that's next to me which is 335 Fountain and then the buildings even though they sit along Sutter they still classify as Fountain so we had 305 and then our headquarter building which is 315 now in 315 you know like certain things I'm gonna move around with um, lads, but you know how this this game goes. So you know, I just keep it, you know, real. Yeah. So my my super OGs, just put it this way, they, they they the Williams family. You know what I'm saying? And the main one, you know, he he was like a big brother to me because back then, you know, like when we was growing up, a motherfucker might be live just because he got a lot of sisters and brothers. You know, so most of your fights or whatever, you you know, you be worried about somebody that's in their family jumping in. And this is how the family thing began because it was just me and my mom. So any time I get into a, a, a scuffle, I got to walk toward the building because we live on the seventh floor. So my mom would be looking out the window. And by the time she look out the window, then I know it's cool because my mom's is getting ready to come downstairs. So this, this feeds into the story. It was a cat. And even to this day, this motherfucker, no matter what he do, use drugs or whatever, ever in the street, homie still looked young. His name was Daryl Monroe. And he was a bully back then. And me and him had got into it. So my mom was coming downstairs. But by the time she got downstairs, we was already like dancing. So my mom wanted to break it up. And my big old GL was like, yo, you know, Miss I, you gotta let him fight. You gotta let him be a man. You know what I'm saying? So that was my first little thing. And after that, I whooped them out. You know what I'm saying? So I was good. So that's how that right there went. So more or less, all of these dudes is my mentors because they was even in the project before I got there. And what type, what, of, what type of bullying that dude was trying to do like? You know, like little simple shit. We playing, you know, baseball or some shit like that. And 
you know, motherfucker want to house you for your, 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 you know, your glove, you know, your ball, you know, like back then, shit, you a young nigga, you go to the park, you got a brand new basketball, you know, you be lucky if you get a chance to play with your basketball, if it's the older nigga, you know, sometimes they might just take your rock and be like, yo, shorty, you know, this here, you know, all of that, the things that, I guess we considered, you know, in the hood back then growing up that they got to do with developing you as a man. So a lot of that shit was, you know, based on individuals making your manhood, catching you, giving you pink belly, bellies, you know, all that shit where you get in the elevator and niggas call corners, the slap boxing, all, all these things, you know what I'm saying? So that they can make sure that wherever you go, you know, that you... You a man, you you know, you gotta represent yourself. After that scrap out, you started hanging amongst those dudes that was like, yo, you gotta let them, or you was already hanging out with them. Well, you know, they were, you know, they had brothers and, and other things. So their youngest brother was, you know, like kind of a little bit more closer to me. These dudes might be like, you know, back then, they were more for this, uh, 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 12 or whatever and the individual 16 those four years meant something back then mm-hmm. now they of course it don't mean anything but back then it, 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 it meant something so yeah, that was a whole adult if you if a dude was 16 and you was 12 he was like an adult to you exactly you know what i'm saying so that's that's how that basically went right here when the first time you could actually say you started doing crime Oh, I say, shit. It might have been around the area of uh, 10 or 11. We all, I know it had to be, if you would consider crime stealing, then, you know, we started out young from, you know, going to Tony's and, you know, trying to rip off a uh, 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 Drake's, you know, um, pie cake or something like that. But I guess with the graduation came elementary school, we was going to TSS. They had this shit out back then called Vampire Blood. So we used to cut out and, and go steal the vampire blood and come back to school and, and, and put it all over to the teachers got hit that it was fake blood. You know what I'm saying? But it all started at TSS, which was right across the street from Pink Houses. So uh, me and my man's, uh, my man Shifty, Gangster Labby, he got killed in uh, April the 12th, 1979. But me, him, my the first cat out of our little crew that went to do a big, because he was locked up when Larry got killed was my man Box. That was my little team back then. And, and and another cat that was from my side, but he ended up moving over the Sutter side. Like that side, I was watching again the day when you was talking to uh, little Kasim Blacko, you know, where he was talking about his uncle, which his uncle named is Skeety, Ski, Mount Monty. You know what I'm saying? On that side, on Jesus in them side. But anyway, GB used to live on our side first. So that was my little team. And we used to go to TSS, you know what I'm saying? And that's when we first started with what you would call, I guess, boosting, you know? And um, that's when they, you know, everything, the Wilson, Spalding, you know, sports shit. But Wilson was coming out with track suits back then. So me, Larry and Box and them at GB, we went to uh, TSS and uh, we stole some uh, track suits out of there. And I ended up getting in a little beef because uh, my man GB tried to play me. And uh, my other man that lived in this building, which was one of the dudes that went to school, which has got a lot to do with me uh, going to school with my man Eric and shit. And that's when it really first started for me in life as far as thinking, using my head. And he was like, yo, man, you, you, you know, because I was tall for my age back then or whatever. So he was like, yo, man, your problem B is that, you know, you always run your mouth before you think. 
you know, and that's why you always keep getting in this shit. And, and then from that point on, I became more of a thinker, you know what I'm saying, and then just basing everything on physical size or whatever. So that's how that shit right there went. Then the, didn't TSS have like a movie theater too, or across the street was a movie theater? Yeah, you know this is this shit. This that movie theater shit is eons afterward. Matter of fact, that's supposed to be uh, Magic Johnson's uh, dead uh, cinema plex or whatever. But yeah, the movie theater, all that Spring Creek, all that shit is way, way, way after what we talking about. We talking about TSS like. Uh, Fucking the uh, uh, the early seventies, you know what I'm saying? Star Right City didn't even exist then. Right, Star Right shit. I know Star Right gotta be after Linden Plaza, and I know Linden Plaza was built in 1971. Because when I first moved out there, Plaza Linden Plaza wasn't there; it just was the A train yard. You know. Mm. And that's another thing because by the time they built Plaza and everything, you know, I don't want to jump around to too much shit too fast for you, lad, but it's so much shit is like crazy that, that you know, that people going to be bugging on, on, on the attachment. So I'm going to throw a little in with, with that being that we're talking about that quick fast. Um, when my very first, like, real friend, when Plaza opened was my man um Seal, Stanley Bell. And and the crazy part, right? Who I'm talking about, he's Zab Judah's uncle. Zab's uh, mother, Kathy, you know what I'm saying? They they she was a five percenter before she was an earth, before she went and got with Zab's uh father. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when she's, you know, cause the the, the um the, the Israelite sisters, they like out, you know, like our woman, they covered up. So, you know, when she got with the Israel like thing, she was coming around with the all white, you know, with her head wrapped in, you know, the turban and all that. And she had Zab in, in, in her stomach. And then they had another brother that um passed away, our man little free. Bobby Bell, he was older than us, but you know, he was small, so you know, that right there took 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 place. But uh yeah, uh that was the first one and he uh was writing graffiti in 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 uh on the train and I was writing King B and he was writing Two, and then I changed my name to Ted. So we started the graffiti writing together. And um, that was another thing we used to go to TSS to steal the rust noleum paint. And uh, back then, you had the pilots, but also we made what you call uniwars to make the, 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 the graffiti writing thicker. When you when you wrote your name, you would get an eraser and you break the eraser up and you get yourself like some type of can and you make it around the eraser. Of course you wanna make it square and then you take the ink and you pour the ink all over the eraser until it's soaking in there real good. And then you that's what we call the uniwar, because it would when you write your name it would be real, real thick. So I went through that little phase right there with the graffiti writing. Uh, the, the the biggest group of graffiti writers, not the biggest, but one of them was called the Three Yard Boys, 3YB. And that's where all that shit, I don't know, you know, if it's related like out on the West Coast, because, you know, later on with the gang thing, they started writing over their shit, but... Back then, if you was a graffiti writer and somebody wanted to diss you when you put your name up there, they would come and put Hot 110 over it, you know? So that was like, yo, I don't respect you. But why they call it Hot 110? Now, now, now that part, lads, for me to just make up some shit to go with that, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be lying, you know what I'm saying? But I'm so, so everybody dude. did that? Like, everybody used that tag to disrespect another dude? 
Yeah, basically. That was that was the disrespect and the graffiti joint. I don't know, you know, nothing else. It wasn't about really like a nigga putting like an X through your name or none of that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? The basic disrespect thing was a motherfucker would put hot one ten on. Um, one dude, right? <laughs> this was my man, Messiah. But like I said, this is like right before like the whole, you know, person was under the five percent thing. Uh, took place with us so he was uh messiah used to write f99 for fine 99 and you know the more that you tag shit you know the the, the bigger you was you know that's what that was all about that's that was the first form of motherfucker <laughs> getting the other motherfuckers to know who the fuck that was the is, first you know going viral that was the first going right. viral on the internet. There you go. That's that just like KRS One. He was really with that shit. You know what I'm saying? He was a real graffiti writer. Like you went all through the trains, you would see KRS One. You know, so that was that was like a, a part of our makeup. You know, in the whole thing of what we going toward this gangster shit and everything else. All of these things was like little, you know. Uh, categories of, of our build up of, of, of everything that you later on became in life so that was one of the things oh I was telling you about uh, the 599 shit so my man was tagged in and matter of fact he lived in the 18th building on the first floor too and um, so me and him is hanging out but we went to a party might have been like up there on Picking Avenue and like around Shepherd or Burm and some shit. And uh, we went up into the party and before we got up into the party, this nigga had tagged 599, the S99 shit. So we up in the party and some niggas come in or something like, yo, who the fuck is this F99 nigga? You know? And I'm saying to myself, I'm looking at my man like, we might not want to answer that shit. <laughs> And we got the fuck up out of there. But the thing was, later on, we found out that the niggas was uh, on some shit. Because I think he had wrote on the niggas' pops car or some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Because all niggas would tag anything, anywhere. But that was just, you know, one of those things like uh, with that graffiti thing. That was just the, really the phase of, uh, of, of the graffiti thing. So more or less, the moral to that story was niggas was just tagged in all over with the graffiti thing right then. So you you had to be careful because you might write something somewhere on somebody's shit. And, and later on down the line, person find out who you is, you know, they want to go upside your head. So that was just the experience right there, basically, with the graffiti. And then from... The graffiti shit and everything else just all type of shit started to evolve. What y'all started getting into though, like y'all was getting money on some drug in with the drugs at a young age in, in Cyprus? Right. Okay, so see, like like with me, I kinda started out early because like I tell motherfuckers, I got all my hustle from my moms. My moms go scrub floors, white people, all that. You know what I'm saying? She played a little number and everything like that, but it was just me and her. So, you know, I used to see how my moms used to get it in, you know? So I, at a young age, I started packing bags across the street. The first one we got there was called Warbounds. Then after Warbounds left, it was Dan Supreme. And you know, back then, packing bags, that was some more critical shit. Cause you know, the older cats, they'll wait for you to pack bags all day. And then when you come out, the shit down is on, mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's basically where I started as far as me being a, a young dude that always wanted to, you know, have some change of my own. So from the, um, the pack and bag shit, I would say my next adventure was that really got me going with this whole hustling shit was my man, um, T-Bone. He was from 305. 
Tyrone Champion. He's still alive. I see him off and on. I tell him this story every time I see him too. Be like, yo, you the OG nigga that got me in the game. But anyway, back then, it was loose joints being, you know, so so he was the first nigga that I seen that, you know, the older cats that was going around the project selling loose joints. So when I got the I went to Franklin K. Lane, 1976. We used to have the, uh, you know, those buses, the 14 bus used to come on our side and pick us up. And then uh, after, at first it would stop where we was on uh, uh, Fountain and Sutter, and then it go down to the side where Glaze and them is, which is Sutter and Euclid. And then you go on down to Crescent Street, make that turn. That's the last one you could you could get on is right there on Crescent and Sutter on the 14. So you had a, a 14 bus that was made to go straight to Lane on our side, and then you had a 13 bus that was made to pick up everybody from pink houses and all that. And you know what I'm saying? That would go straight to Lane. So. I seen everybody was, you know, we get in the back of the um, bus or whatever, you know, and, and get their loose joints. Most of the time, people ain't going that, 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 that first class that's before homeroom, you know. Most of the time, niggas ain't going there, so we get the lane with the guards, you know. We go do our lessons, but most of the time, it was fucking dice games, everybody buying their new loose joints, so. That was my first introduction into, you know, as far as like the hustle work. I started out with loose joints in 1976, going to Franklin K. Lane. Ark Bar was he wasn't part of the A team, right? He just was an associate. Right. Ark, that's that's another that's another one of you know my official OGs. And the reason I can say that. That's a story right there too, man. That won't fucking save me on the bus. I might have been about 15. Um, you know how they had the big Labor Day parades, and that was another thing. You know what I'm saying? We, all of us, would get together the guards and shit, and we start from Cyprus and walk all the way up to Sutter and walk Sutter all the way up right on into Eastern Parkway. We wouldn't even get on the bus, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Back then. But anyway, um, the Labor Day parade was over. And um, I was on the bus, I'll never forget, that's when the, um, like, that's kind of when the sweatsuit era had kind of started. It, w- it was before the, the championship, but it was, uh, I know it wasn't no Adidas, it was just a regular kind of um, sweatsuit. And I had that, and I forgot how the fuck I got that chain. But it was a nice Cuban chain. And um, we was on the bus coming back, and when we got over there, that Mother Gaskin was stoned back then. And you know, the 14 bus usually turn right there where the library is. Um, what the fuck is that side? Is that Van Dyke too? Yeah, it's, anyway. it's Van Dyke that's yeah. right across the street from the library. And Brownsville right. House is across the street on the other side. Nah. And Tilden, my fault. Ah, right. So, yeah, because my middle son, um, I made him over there um, with Marcus Garvey Village. Uh, they were on Bush Street between Vonia and Riverdale. Marcus Garvey Village, small one. But yeah, um, so I'm on the bus and shit with the shit on, but I had my flag on that, you know, and that's what's really good about us going through this, because, you know, I could tell you that on some real shit, lads, a lot of shit that I did back then and my movements, like, throughout New York City was based on that I was a 5% and when motherfuckers seen that flag, you know, that shit was ultimate respect. But anyway, um, this tech, Back then, I don't know whether it was, um, damn, I don't know whether it was Bo Pep or one of them niggas, you know, the motherfucking Browns who was always ill, you know, so I know mad motherfuckers from out of there too, from BRC, all that shit back then. But he was one of them, you know, 
kind of upper echelon dudes, and he was getting ready to bag me for the chain. You know what I'm saying? And all Bark was sticking in the back. And somehow he must have seen the move, you know, because that's what made Art Bark so powerful because of the whole Tomahawk shit and Brownsville and everything. So, you know, he guard for real. And he seen the move get made to go down. And all I remember him saying, Yo, motherfuckers better not touch no guards, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, we always had, because like I said back then, you know, I, definitely with me. You know, I sent you one of the pictures with me and and my man Igar, Ilar, and I think Kedar is in that picture where it says uh, the powerhouse is on it. You know, so that's when Pink Houses was mad strong with the knowledge, you know, and uh, Art Bark was there because, you know, Art Bark original name is Chant. And uh, his brother that passed away, he, he, you know, I'm still going to respect them regardless of any of that other shit, you know, as powerful. So he was little champ, you know, and that's where they, they you know, they get the whole uh, Tomahawk thing from. Yeah, and powerful son was Octavius, right? Right, right. And that's, 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 that's powerful name, Octavius. So that was little I. So the Tomahawks was all guard too at that time? Nah. See, that's, that's the whole key to it right there. You know what I'm saying? That's what my whole joint about the guard in the streets type thing is, is that that's what happened. So we will we, we'll fast forward a little bit and go into that right there, okay? Um. So like I said, my, my, my two cousins over at Albany Projects, you know, they my mentors with all the bullshit, you know, out in the street and everything else like that. So I'm 11 years old and shit. That's uh, 1973, that's right. I was 11 years old. So I went over to their crib. So I come through the door and everything else. I, I look on the refrigerator, I see a big sign that say, pig most wanted, 999 disease and all this shit. Like, yo, what the fuck? Then all of a sudden, I'm hearing, you know, motherfuckers calling each other by different names. My, my big cousin, Boo Boo, and shit, his name had turned to Supreme, and his brother, Butch, had turned to Rashim. Now, all these dudes was Jolly Stompers. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they, you know, you know how Albany it's crazy one side is supposed to be bank side the burger side the other side or choice side is supposed to be crown Heights side or whatever but they lived in 1191 park place on the 10th floor of Gilyard. they shit they was in that building for like almost damn near 60 years just a few years ago they finally uh closed that apartment down so like i said i get in there i see the pigs so then i get to the back room looking at my two cousins, these motherfuckers was some idiots back then. I'm like, damn, there's something different about these dudes. So I see them sitting there, then I see my big cousin, Boo Boo, with a, a book in his hand and shit, a uh, composition joint, or one of them, one of them joints anyway. So uh, he opened it, I'm looking at him, reading something. So I'm like, yo, man, can I see what you got right there? So he like, you gotta go to the bathroom and wash your hands first. Looking at this dude like, yo, what the fuck these dudes on some religion shit now? What's happening? What's so important about this this book he reading right there? So I come back, he let me get it. I go through Supreme Math Max, I see all that. I wasn't still impressed yet. But when I got to that first degree in the student enrollment, who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet, Earth, Father, civilization, and God of the universe. I said, yo, this is the shit I'm talking about. You know, because as a young dude, you know, like people don't realize how much racism that we was going through back then in the 60s, even, you know, up top, up north and shit, man. So I always had a problem with going to school. Everything was white, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you go to church, you know what I'm saying? It's a goddamn 
white person, blonde hair, blue eyes, like, damn, white people run everything, we don't run nothing, you know? So I'm like, yo, this the shit I want. So I'm figuring, lads, this going to be some gang related shit where these niggas going to tell me I got to go through the mill, you know? Like that real shit back then, you go through the mill, niggas punch you and all that shit going down the line or whatever. And you initiated, so I'm like, yo, I'm ready for that shit right there, even though I was 11 years old. So I said to him next, yo, what I got to do to be down? He says, yo, you got to go on a fast for seven days, and all you can do is drink water and eat ice cream. I looked at this small I'm like, what? I said, nah, man, I ain't fucking with that. You know? I ain't have no discipline back then, you know what I'm saying? I'm still dipping with swine and all this shit. Boy, they should be telling me I got to uh, go on a fast. So I thought that shit was to the extreme. So I didn't get it when I was 11 years old. You know, you got a lot of cats that run around here because that shit is big in the nation when you got knowledge, you know, and a motherfucker up front just in my age bracket to try and act like they got it, you know, a little bit earlier, but... You know, I I don't go that route. I ain't with none of that fake shit. So um, what happened was, it wasn't until 1976, 1976, my summer youth court job was in um, over there at Alpha School. It's still there. And so it's still there on Linden Boulevard. I think it's, uh, it's either between Logan and Milford on Linden Boulevard or whatever, but it's still over there. Um, so even back then, I'm like, shit, I ain't got to pick up no papers or nothing like that. So the job consists of us going to school, the summer school. That's what it consists of. So I'm like, cool, I could go, I could get paid with the summer youth corps. And what they promised us is that it would go toward our high school diploma so i'm like yo i'm all with this shit so sure enough i get up in there and that was it damn near the whole fucking uh program was full of nothing but five percentage from over in pink houses the powerhouses at that time so the first brother that gave it to me was a brother named god revere he gave me the Supreme Mathematics, Supreme Alphabet, 12 Jews, and a student in Roman. And I was on some, you know, just taking on the name for, for namesake, which was wonderful God, you know. But um, this was the summer. So I had kind of mastered them shit, quit what he gave me. But by that time, the, the summer youth um, court job was over. So my best friend in my building, B, Barry, he was like, yo, my, my, my brother got the whole thing. That's when we used to put the lessons in the, the album cover book. And he was like, yo, my brother got all the whole thing. So he, he said, yo, he, I don't think he fucking with it no more. So I said, yo, get, let, let, let me get it. So he gave me the album cover and it, it had the whole 120 in it. But, you know, I know you you 5% related and, and everything else, but I'm going to give you, like, real history like that. You know, I don't know if you ever heard of a cat called Robert Walker. Yeah. He was in, he was in Matawan with our father, and he was very, very, very intelligent. And um, when he came out, he uh, formed in another flag, a 13-point flag and everything else. And he formed a, a off branch of the five percentage, which was called firstborn Muslims, you know? And the reason why we called them firstborn Muslims because they used to study all these high, you know, plus degrees and shit while he was water wet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he used to be Robert 9X, right? In a nation of Islam. Robert 9X, and then he, I think he got, I don't know if he got, I don't want to say he got kicked out of the NOI or whatever. But I think, right. I think he was Robert 9X at first. But them dudes' lessons, 
was out of control with the right. mathematics and the the how many how many uh inches is in the oh, they was out of control with the with them joint. But yeah, my fault. Right. Right. You good, you good, cause I'm I'm glad that you got like some history so that you understand, you know, where I'm coming from with them. So um getting back to that, so I had those lessons and I was in that same building. 315, which is, you know, ended up becoming our headquarters as far as the 18 shit is later on down the line. And I was studying them in the hallway, and the brother that walked in was ended up becoming, you know, my really enlightener and everything. We called him God at that time. But his uh his name that all the older brothers that was back then with him, they called him Subal. And you know all the most of the, the 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 older brothers, you know they they mastered martial arts and all that shit. And that that within itself, when we was young growing up, was you know kind of a requirement too. You know most of the older brothers they would make sure you knew how to fucking protect yourself and use your hands. So he seen me studying those lessons and, and on those lessons it says, in the name of Almighty Victorious God Allah. You know, and then they had all the organic this, general this, and you know, like you said, the 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 the, the, the real spaced out plus lesson thing. Not spaced out as far as it being space, but you know, some things those high sciences that shit don't apply to everyday living. So you really don't need it, not unless you're dealing absolutely in those fields. And uh. God was like, yo, those those are not right and exact. You know, he said, if you want the real ones, you know, come upstairs. So I went upstairs with him to the fifth floor. He went in the back, came back to the door, gave me a set of 120, and that was it. I left, and I got on a mission. So it was a lot of, a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying, when it first first started bubbling in my projects and you know I got it like I said the summer of 76 so you might have had dudes that might have got it like 74 and the 73 you know which was was young for for us and I know young guard was like one of the first ones him and wise and them but anyway it was a lot of dudes that never mastered 120 or anything like that before I got my 120. So when I got got it from him, I was on a mission. And that was the summer. So by um, December, because I wanted to make sure I knew 120 before, you know, the new year came in, which was 77. So December, I got my 120. You know what I'm saying? I was sparking. I know this shit frontwards and backwards so when we was young in the math how motherfuckers would test you they would test you with all the big degrees you know what i'm saying uh like for example the favorite one was the bill degree in the one to 40 you know what make rain hail snow and earthquakes you know that's a long one you know uh the one to 14, why we make the devil study from 35 to 50 years before he can call himself a Muslim son. And the biggest one is the wisdom build degree. What was Yaku's first rules and regulations when all the laws of being forced in by manufacturing devil? You know what I'm saying? That That's that, that one right there. So like you say, you know, the culture degree, why we run y'all calling his main devil, you know, across the out of and desert, all, all those joints like that was the big degree. So I, you know, I'm totally prepared for that with the, with the young, you know, with our peers. So, um, I'm in the hallway and my lightning walk in, a bunch of other ones that surround this, this, that's coming up with me. I'm, making the first hurdle so he walks in I'm like yo God I'm ready I got my 120 so he looked at me he said you sure I said yeah I got my 120 I'm ready cause see that was another thing back then when I was growing up and it, I don't I can't say that it was practiced in all boroughs or everything with the 5 percentage but 
out our way, you couldn't wear a flag not unless you knew 120. You know? And then when you got it, you know, you had to put your name in the flag. So it was another older brother at that time, Monique. He used to get the flags and put our names in it and have it pinned all inside his coat to give you inspiration to learn your 120. So anyway, getting back to my nightmare, um, he said, yeah, you got it? I said, yeah. So I'm figuring he gonna come with one of those real hard degrees. So he said, what's the guard degree in the one in 40? And I looked around, cause that's one of the shortest fucking degrees that there is in the one in 40, you know? And that degree is how fast does our planet travel? I said 1,437 and one third miles per hour. And then he said to me, prove it. And that's where I got stuck all over again. When he said prove that shit, it was right back to, you know, the drawing board. And the thing that was ironic, um, Lads, is that a lot of times they try and say that in our nation, you know, that we male chauvinistic and everything else. But the first person to show me how to break down the degrees was an earth. I never forget her, uh, Love Asia, you know, and she lived right there in the building and everything. And matter of fact, my enlightenment was teaching her also, but you know, back then, the young earth, you know, you could have an educator, as we would say, and you know that brother, because his sister's young, but she wore knowledge, you ain't supposed to be physically touching her, so you could be her educator, so that was kind of like her and God, my enlightenment situation, and back then, you know, they was the first group of five percenters that went to Harlem Prep. And from Harlem Prep is how, you know, they was that first generation of five percent that went off to college and everything else, you know. So um, they still had hookups, you know, with different individuals that uh, were still working up there at Harlem Prep. So he sent to the Harlem Prep and Love Age got all straight A's. And uh, she was the first one to show me that you divide the 24 hours in a day into the circumference of the planet Earth, which is 24,896, approximately 25,000 miles, you know, and that's how you get to 1,037 and one third miles per hour. I know another way, which is, you know, with all, uh, they say the Earth travels at 15 degrees at 1,037 and one third miles per hour. So 24 times 15 is 360 degrees. So Earth done made a complete rotation, and that's the 24,896, approximately 25,000 miles. But anyway, you know, we gon' we we gonna get into all this shit and what's good. Is that that's, this is why I want to go through this because all of this is necessary in the build up like you know my platform God, gangster and gentleman 5% of first then gangster in the street and then the gentleman part is when I left to go away to college and whatever so this is a build up but this is how you know we was engulfed with this science and everything before you understand this whole drug thing hit, hit the thing. That's what, need, that's what New York needs right now. New York needs knowledge of self again. We need another wave of these degrees becoming what it is in these streets. Absolutely. Because that's what it was meant for. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we taught it back then. That's why, I, you see, people got to understand. They was, come on. But you're talking about in the 60s, 1964, you know? And that's where, that's where you know, they got to keep it real. Whether the Muslims want to accept it or not, you know? Once the father realized what that first degree meant, like, who else is you looking for? There is no mystery God. We done searched for him for trillions of years. So this original man we talking about, is, it, it's got to be me. And that's when he stepped outside of that and said, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm going and I'm giving it to the, the ones that, that need it the most. 
I'm going to give it to the babies. I'm going to give it to the youth. You know, because most of the time, the old back then, when we say, you know, we ain't teaching no old individual that's stiff-necked and rebellious and set in their ways. You know, so the concept from, you know, Black Messiah, firstborn Black Messiah and Prince and all them, all them niggas was the law being all them, all them dudes was massive thugs in the street. You know? These were the ones back then that was the gang leaders and everything else. So this is why, like you said, and see, that's the importance of Medina, which is Brooklyn. The 5 percent thing came, we had the most amount of 5 percenters, and, you know, just like in everything else, the, the, the thugged out part, and I'm not saying, I'm not disrespecting none of the guards from any other borough, because, you know, brothers put it in all over. You know, but like our thing is Medina, you know, we the guards from Medina where the grass is greener and the guards are meaner. You know, so we was always the Medina warriors. So back then when them brothers was, you know, outnumbered, you know, we, we talked about God, you know, all type of disrespectful shit that was going on. And you talking about you ain't eating pork and everything. I went through it and, and you know, I'm the second generation. You know, so them brothers had to get down for their cramp. And and because of who they was and the way that they carried it, you know, they impressed it. individuals like Art Bark and, you know, all that shit even start out with the, the first generation of guards because all of them is from the original gangs, you know, in Brooklyn and everything that, you know, the uh, Fort Green chaplains and everything. And I seen the joint that you did, I think it was with a brother named Wise, and he was talking about the original gangs in uh, New York. Yeah. And he went into some ill shit, right, when he said, when he was talking about the gangs in Bay Star, and he mentioned the Imperial Buccaneers. You know, and that plays a part because, you know, people migrate, so that's a part of our history out there, too, like with the uh, brother minister, you know what I'm saying? And and, and they, they had a fable. That's that's one of the dudes that uh, Glaze say uh, he was scared of two dudes. Uh, um, well, that one was Rasta T and... Uh, in, in Black Sea Shebae but minister he, he looked up to highly cause we had a fable when we was young growing up and they used to call him Ski Head and the legend in the hood was he was called Ski Head cause like I said it was a lot of racist shit going on out there back then so the OGs before us they really had to put it down so they claimed that he went to Crescent Street the pizza pile is still there right now and he went in the pizza parlor and chopped the uh, the um, Italian nigga's head off and ran through the project with his head. So, you know, that's where the ski head shit, but that, you know, later on down the line, that shit was just a, a, a fable because he was, you know, that big, you know, of, of, of like you would say, uh, we, the gangster guard type shit, you know. So, but minister, you know, minister was minister. He was a motherfucker. Him, Raheem, all of them. We, those are the brothers that are uh, going into that. It is what we call the Doom Squad back then. So, you know, those are the older group, you know, of guards that if we do got some problems and the shit is beyond our control and you really dissing the nation. Them are the type of individuals you gotta look forward to seeing, and and nobody want to see them do, you know. So that's how that shit right there went. Mm. I ain't really get up on here for this. I got up on here for what we doing right now, like you say, to bring this back. What you say, which is the the foundation of how all games got crushed in New York City. We talking about, you know what I'm saying, Seven Crown, uh, Savage Skulls, Ex-Vandals, and, and even out our way, you know what I'm saying, which when we go through this, you know, that, that right there, that sex boy and crazy homicide shit. But, 
you know, dirty ones, this one, Hellcats, Together Brothers, you know, all the gang shit that was going on basically got crushed. And it's not just crushed with us, it was crushed with the Latinos and everything. You mean it, the, like the knowledge of self started spreading through the streets and it made them gangs come up under the nation, all of them? Or it just so a lot of them, a lot of them jolly stomp. But you said the tomahawks and all of those gangs started becoming God. Mainly those two gangs. Mainly those two gangs, because those was two of the biggest gangs in Brooklyn at that time. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it, it trickled down. Once, once the, the, the guard, once the older brothers started civilizing individuals like Art Bark and all of them, and, and Rainbow, all the rest of them, you know, that 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 was gang bangers. That's that's where they went, but that's how we was taught, you know, and that's how I always did. When I go in the hood or whatever, however it's going there, I'm looking around. I want to find the worst, most savage motherfuckers that's in the hood, that's controlling the hood. We looking for the illest cat, the illest savage that's in the neighborhood. Because once I know I go in and I civilize him, the rest of them is going to basically follow because they already got respect for him. Mm. So I don't want to go and get the weak motherfucker. That ain't shit. You know, the weak motherfucker is just going to be introducing you to the real motherfuckers that you got to civilize. So, anywhere I go, you know, I, if I'm going to teach, I want the, the illest, most savage cats that's there because I know once I teach the most savage ones, everybody else going to fall into place. I could get access to all type of old articles from the 60s, 70s. And bro, I be reading them articles. It's a it's a hundred headlines of Tomahawk. Tomahawk arrested today for three homicides that happened in Bed Star. Jolly Stomper arrested for two a double homicide in Brownsville. I'm talking about in the 70s or whatever, like way back in the days. How crazy was those beefs between those gangs like that? Because you know, some of these young dudes out here, they may think those gangs wasn't really that serious and it was just fighting and brawling nah it wasn't just fighting and brawling right and and see that's what that's what i'm saying lads that's so serious about us dealing with history and timeline because see in all of that is how you gonna see how everything evolved all right so when we talk about the, the gang era you talking about niggas making zip guns. You talking about a nigga taking a coat hanger off of a car and going in a shop class with wood and a bunch of rubber bands and making a fucking zip gun. You did? Mm. If you was in the hood back then and you had a 38 or a 32 handgun and shit like that, you, you know, you doing a little something. So, as they say to that, right? They gonna say it's more valid now because for the simple fact that most of y'all niggas is using guns. But back then you talking about knives, chains, bats, you know what I'm saying? And really more or less, you know, it still was on some manhood shit. Like I said, Artbalk was Artbalk because he was checked. Like, you know, they playing the education of Sonny Carson and all that. Matter of fact, I seen them cats mob ties, they just did a little thing on um, Art Bar. I heard his, his daughters in them is a little upset because they saying somebody from out of town did it. But, you know, I mean, that's the only thing about this social media shit. You can't please everybody no matter what way you go about it, you know. But if they giving somebody their props, you know, it don't matter where they from. They shining light on it, but... Like I said, when it came to that hand game, you know, Arkbark and the niggas was pieces. But you said you know? Arkbark was already G.O.D. on that bus that day? Why no, Why he, he wanted to protect the guards? He was already guard? Oh, at that yeah. time, he had left the Tomahawk. He had evolved into the guards from the Tomahawks? Exactly. And, and you was on the true. bus and them dudes came on the bus or they was already on the bus? He was already on the bus. 
<laughs> when I got on the bus. But you know, back then, that shit is packed like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's getting off on the bus, you know, Brownsville, we go, that's the 14. We go, once we get rid of the veil, we cross, you know, uh, over Pennsylvania, because you know, really, with the East New York thing, you know, that's crazy, lads, because back in the days, we used to be like, the niggas that was on the, the, the Thomas Jefferson side of, of Pennsylvania Avenue, you know that's all still East New York until you get up to, what is that, Van Sindrin, where the, the L train run? Yeah. Like, basically, once you go over that that little bridge where the train is, that's that's classified as Brownsville. Mm-hmm. So all the niggas that's on that side of Pennsylvania, that Sheffield, uh, motherfucking, uh, what is that? Is it, is it no, Amboy and... Yeah, you're going toward all that. Well, Amboy and Powell was down a little bit more. But those little couple of blocks, you know, leading up to that. Sheffield, Hinsdale, whatever else is in there. You know, I, I don't want to take the time out to think of all the blocks on that side there again. But we used to call those niggas East New York Brownsville niggas. Because even though they was... Technically, in East New York, they still had the, the Brownsville shit. And you know, even though it's really no fucking separation between us, but somehow, Brownsville always got the title to be a little bit more grimier. You know what I'm saying? So, it was that that that, that type of shit that was uh, going on back then. Yo, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I'm talking about like, you know, maybe like, um, 81, 82. Um, I used to, we used to play in East New York. Like, it was so many abandoned buildings and it was so crazy, desolate in East New York. We used to play out there and, you know, I look back now I'm, as an adult, like we was bugging out playing in them abandoned buildings and stuff like that. We could have been died. But how was East New York back in the late 70s and early 80s like, that area had to be out of control, like I always say, like the Death Wish movie with Charles Bronson. Oh yeah, I seen when they did um one of the last uh Death Wish joints. They did that shit right over on Belmont and something. Charles Bronson was out there, everything. See what mother you gotta realize I put that shit up there too, man. <laughs> Cats can talk a lot of shit, man, but for one Brownsville is so fucking ill because of all the fucking p- p- close vicinity of all the projects. You know? And then where we at in East New York, you know, at least on our side, of course, you got Boulevard, Linden Houses, and all the other joints, but just our joint back there, Cypress, Pink Houses, and then eventually uh, Linden Plaza, that um, East New York is only 5.5 square miles. And if the East is 5.5 square miles, I'm positive that Brownsville is even smaller. You know? So we talking about like in one of the joints I did to build all of this up because a lot of time motherfuckers don't know you should hire that nigga captain or this, that, and the third. I put up one of the front page joints where they called it the killing ground. So from the mid eighties or whatever, all the way up into the nineties and anybody know about 75th <laughs> showtime or all that shit is real too. I got mad stories with that. Michael McGowan, nigga that was sniffing coke off of the fucking um, while riding around in the patrol car and all that shit. So the shit was ill. But they say that between those years that we was on fire so bad that every 63 hours you was guaranteed a body. Guaranteed. But when it's hot, it's every 22 hours. You know? Mm. And that's that's the difference. Like, you know, when I travel and go abroad and all that, you got gangsters everywhere. Like they say, it ain't where you from, it's where you at. 
You know, I've been in a lot of spots where I had to save motherfuckers because they talking that New York shit and don't realize these country niggas or these dudes over here will tear your ass to pieces. Like now, a lot of that's more prevalent, you know, because a lot of places, you know, we get that hate. So it's, it's felt more, but, you know, all that just because I'm from New York and somewhere, that shit can get your, 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 your head knocked off. But, um, like I was saying, uh, everywhere we went or whatever at those times, it, it, that's what made us so aggressive because we was brought up in areas that was, you know, um, with so many people populated in these small areas and having to deal with all these different you know, uh, emotions, moods, characters, and everything else. So I used to tell niggas when I go to a country town or whatever, yo, you a gangster here and, and everything else is cool. I said, but you a gangster in an area where it's all houses. So the amount of people that y'all got in this whole area, we might have that shit in two or three buildings in the project. So the more amount of people that you got to deal with, you know, the more hectic it's going to be for you to get to the top of the food chain because you're going to be tested with all those different type of individuals. So there is a difference between a nigga being a gangster. For me, again, it might be murders and all that going on, but it's not as many people and as many things that's going on with it. So if you reach the top of the food chain in Brownsville, East New York, or whatever, you know, you, you're doing something because it's, it's a thousand and one other cats that's out there. They got the same mentality that you got. Born Cassidy by Franklin the Lafayette Took a lot of L's, still excelling, ain't stopped me yet They ain't wanna hand over Hey yo, don't sleep, real spitters with real bars is still out there, you heard? Check out the bro sick in the head from Staten Island Link is in the comment section and in the description To this video, he blacking The truth is speaking It's Gen Pop Laz, certified cash They don't know though Hey yo, LAZ, make sure you check that store link in the descriptions and in the comment section. Now I mean to cop up one of them gem pop tees, hoodies, or accessories. Yerk.